Hi everyone, my name is Tiffany. I am a school psychologist and today I'm going to eat some food and answer your questions. Just to let you guys know, I am 40 weeks pregnant tomorrow <laughs> and so I don't know when my next video is going to be after this. So I'm going to try my best to answer most of your questions and I'm going to eat in the process. So what I got today is from Wawa and I try to eat like sort of healthy this whole pregnancy but sometimes you just have cravings and yeah you just want to eat what's good. Um, so I got a meatball bowl and this has half mac and cheese and half mashed potatoes as a base. I've never had this before. It looks insane and I know their meatballs are good so excited to try that and then I got side of smart food like the popcorn so we'll dig in first meatball mm. yep meatball's good mac and cheese mm. i like it with the marinara sauce i'm like it's not the best mac and cheese in the world but it's decent and on the bottom is the mashed potatoes. Mm. I think it's my first time having their mashed potatoes. And it's like really buttery, flavorful. It's good. It's a good base for sure. So these questions are a combination of school psychology related questions, grad school questions, and personal questions for me, which is what I asked for in my Instagram stories. If you don't follow me on Instagram yet, here's my handle. Make sure to go follow me. I also have a TikTok that's sort of school psychology related. So check those out. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, hit the subscribe button down below. I appreciate all of you guys and we'll get started. So the first question is, has this year been crazier than others assessment wise? Personally, um, which is, I, I feel like it's different than what other people are going through. I work in a middle school, and so just by the nature of like the, like how old the students are, we don't get a lot of initials. This year, we've had two initial sign offs, and I think there's like a third one coming in soon. So that's not a lot at all, which is also expected for middle school. Um, we do have a lot of revaluation um, testing that's going on right now. I think I have like six or seven open cases for revals. So yeah, for this one, personally, no. But when I go into Facebook groups or talk to other psychologists in elementary schools, it really does seem like the initial evaluations have skyrocketed. Maybe parents are just seeing more behaviors because um, they've been home with them because of the pandemic. Like students' behaviors are like, like, it's been crazy and so maybe like teachers are just seeing more behaviors in the classroom I don't really know what it is but they're definitely seeing a lot more assessments in the schools first year teacher here I hate it I don't like teaching do you think school site could be for me this one's really hard I think it depends on your personality what you're good at so like your strengths and like what you're looking for in a job right I think first year teachers are always going to have it the hardest. It's just like there's a huge learning curve. You have to learn so many different things and I'm not sure if grad school gives you enough training, especially in like classroom management. Um, my sister is currently a first year teacher. She talks about how she wants to quit every single day. Like it's so hard. She loves her students. She really cares for them, but the job is hard, especially after the pandemic when students haven't been in school for so long, like in person, like we haven't had a normal school year in so long. If you don't like teaching though, like if you don't like any part of the job, but you still like working with kids, this might be the job for you. You definitely have a lot more flexibility and freedom in terms of like your time and what you do with your time. Um, but of course there are going to be other stressful aspects of the job. Like there's legal deadlines, you work with a lot more parents, families, and admin. There's a lot more paperwork, a lot more report writing, just different things that you'll have to do in the school building compared to teaching. You're not like strapped down to the classroom, which I think is 
it's good and bad like some people just love that kind of environment and some people it just it's not for them someone asked how do you deal with students who don't want to work with you that's really hard especially like being young and being new to the field like it's hard to not take it personally but i think that's why it's so important to build rapport with the students first before you like jump into testing before you start interviewing them kind of like get a sense of like their affect and like their personality and then match their energy and see what they're interested in see what kind of things motivate them a lot of times like i know i work in a middle school but they they love candy, they love fidgets, <laughs> they love those like little things. And then I also have like Pokemon plushies in my room. I try my best to relate to them before, um, you know, jumping into testing or whatever else I'm doing. And sometimes they're just not going to like you. Maybe your personalities just don't mesh and you might need other people to, to help you. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, you'll find a way to, to build that rapport and relationship with them so that you can you know, get some work done. I get this question a lot. How did you find the right grad school for you? And I guess I haven't made a video about it yet. And I will put it on my list of videos to make. I'm not sure if I'm the best person to ask just because I only applied to one program and went to one program. But just having talked to other people in the field and other grad students and also like my previous like grad application process. Some general tips would be to prioritize, like you have to know what you want in a program, right? What's important to you? Is it the location? Is it tuition? Is it um, their like beliefs, like the, the programs, like philosophies? Is it the faculty? Is it like a master's versus a PhD? What is important for you for the grad program? And that's gonna differ for every single person. You also want to consider like what kind of degree you want and what you want to do with that degree after you're done with your program. Do you want a private practice? Do you want to practice in schools? Do you want to do research? And then other things like location, tuition, those things are really important because they will um, determine like whether you need to take a job, be a graduate assistant, where you can live, how much money you'll have, your like livelihood, happiness, and all those things are so important for your mental health and being successful in grad school. If you're considering school psychology, definitely check out the NASP website. They give you all the NASP approved programs by state, which I find is a really good place to start. Depending on your state, like you won't need a NASP approved program, but when programs are NASP approved, you just know for sure that they have all the components that make a good program. How do you keep going when you feel defeated and stressed in grad school? I feel like this is, it's kind of personal, right? Like how people deal with stress and how people cope is going to be different for everyone. For me personally, I think it's really helpful to come back to your why. Like, why are you in grad school? Why do you want to join this field? I think for most of us, it's because we want to help children. We want to work in schools. And you might have a more specific reason. So coming back to that why will be helpful to kind of refuel your motivation and determination. And outside of that, um, having people to go to outside of your grad school network, because grad school is not your entire life. It might feel like that, but you need things outside of grad school, whether it's friends, family, significant others that you can go to and spend time with. Um, do things outside of grad school. Um, make time for those things, whether that's like going to brunch or um, like a hobby, like playing sports. And I really feel like doing those kind of things help me get through grad school. All right, my camera died. <laughs> go figure. So I ate more of this while I was charging my battery and we will get Back into the questions. Did you feel that your internship prepared you for your job? Yes. Yes and no. So I loved my internship. I loved all of my supervisors. I had different rotations, just a variety of experiences. And my district was also very um, focused on like mental health and mental health service delivery on top of our typical like evaluation role, which I loved. But I did end up moving districts um, after I was done with my internship. So I ended up having to relearn like new paperwork, how a district does things. And um, what's crazy is like 
really for this job like district to district they do things so differently and while like the um like the federal laws are there the way schools and districts interpret those laws can make your job look very different and so i think i got a really really great training but i did have to do a lot of relearning and um I'm still asking a ton of questions, which is totally fine. I mean, I'm, I'm a first year psychologist, um, but I do feel like like for the role, I, um, I was pretty well prepared. Any regrets now that you've been in the field for a little? No regrets. I would say there are a lot of things that I didn't know, you know, about the role and the, the field, the job um, until I started my internship. And even throughout grad school, like there was just so much I was learning about school psychology <laughs> because I didn't know enough before starting the program and I, I think that's why it's so important to like go into your research and find opportunities to like work in a school setting and shadow if you can. I know that's really hard especially because like confidentiality um, and there's just not a lot of information out there right now about the job. Like I, I just wish I knew more um, before jumping into the field. Like I wish I knew what it was going to be like, but I have no regrets. I love my job, I love working with kids, and I love collaborating with my school team. Interviews are creeping up. What are some questions you got asked? Um, I got a lot of questions about interviews, like what to expect during the interview process. I guess my question is like interviews for like grad school, interviews for internship, or the job. I guess depending on that, I do have some videos with specific interview questions that they asked me and what kind of answers I gave. I'll put all of them in the cards above. I think for grad school, they want to know about your previous experiences, um, your why, and what you know about the job and the field. So doing this kind of research is really important. And also why you want to go to that grad program, right? Like, <laughs> did you do research about the program and the faculty? So just make sure you're prepped for that. For internship, they will want to know about your grad school experience. So. If you've had any experience before grad school, definitely talk about that and what makes you stand out. And then during grad school, like what kind of things did you do to make you a great candidate for internship? What are you going to bring to the district as an intern? Districts want psychologists, right? There's a shortage in the field, blah, blah, blah. And when they take interns, they're using their resources to train other people. And so they want people that are going to bring something different to the district. Not all districts are like this, <laughs> but from from what I've seen in my area, that's what they're looking for. Um, some districts, they just want you as a, a full-fledged psychologist, which is crazy, and they'll pay you a full salary. If that's what you're looking for, go for it. For me, I really wanted a lot of hands-on training and good supervision, and that's what I was able to get. Oh, and then for the job, the job interview was actually pretty similar to my internship interviews, but um, they do ask like a lot more technical questions now that you've been in the field as an intern for a year. They expect you to know like a lot of like the, the SPED law and um, the paperwork, and then they ask you about like your philosophies on um, different disabilities and, and like how you work with other people. You're still gonna get like a lot of behavioral questions. You'll have to talk about your internship experience, especially if this is your first time doing a job interview after internship. How do you feel about leaving work for now to have a family? Yay. I felt a lot of guilt in the beginning, um, just like knowing that I was expecting and um, you know, I was very upfront with the district that I um, ended up joining, you know, my whole situation, like when I'm due and, you know, everything else that was going on in my personal life. I guess having worked now for a few months, there's just so many women that work in the education field and a lot of people are going to have kids and babies and um, have a family. I'm definitely feeling better about it now. My leave benefits suck because it's my first year working. I really don't get any leave at all. I get six weeks to recover if it's a vaginal delivery and um, I'll be pretty much back in school. I'm only gonna miss like four weeks of work and with the holiday season approaching I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more behaviors but like academically we're not gonna get like too much done. 
So I feel a lot better about it now. I'm so excited. I am honestly terrified of labor and delivery and also like breastfeeding and just the whole change in like my life. But of course, we're so excited to, to meet our baby soon. Um, any day now, could be today, could be in a couple hours or it could be um, in a couple days. So we shall see. Do you like working with middle schoolers or would you want to work with older or younger kids? Um, for my first year of work, I did request middle school. I think it's just a super fun age to work with. Little kids are cute, but I think they're kind of gross. And there's also a lot of initial um, evaluations, which I'm fine with, but I did want to work um, and get more like experience with the mental health piece and counseling. Middle school is just such a cool age where where they're just like going through so many different changes in their like brain and body and like relationships. Our sixth graders are like little kids. And then you see them like in seventh grade, they think they're like adults, they're getting older and our eighth graders, I mean, <laughs> a lot of them are like bigger than me. And their brains are like rapidly developing and you know, they're still kids, but it's just a really cool age to work with and you see like such a wide spectrum of like behaviors and personalities and like interests so i find it a lot of fun i wouldn't mind working in other settings though like including preschool and also um like adult programs <laughs> how did you make it out of grad school alive some some days there are some days it really does feel like um there's no end in sight and it's just like super overwhelming but you will get through it if you need extra support need extra time resources like reach out to your cohort members and your professors and people around you is there a lot of math and stats involved in scoring assessments that are common yes and no like these days um you can do ipad assessments there's a lot of like online scoring programs so you don't have to do as much math but I think it's always good to have those like foundational skills and some districts don't have those apps like they don't pay for those platforms or the iPads so you do have to learn how to do all of those um, like the statistics like understanding the statistics I think it's very important as a psychologist um, when you're interpreting those scores you have to know what it means and so while you don't have to do all the stats like all the math of the stats, understanding the concepts and what the numbers mean is very important. Math wise, I would just say like basic, like addition, subtraction, you can use a calculator, make sure to double check your work. And um, yeah, it's just like basic foundational skills. So that is a wrap. Thank you guys so much for watching. My camera died again. So here I am with my phone. Yeah, I hope that was entertaining or you know you were able to learn something from watching the q a i definitely post more updates on instagram stories so definitely go and check out my instagram yeah i guess the next video um i will have a baby so i'll see you guys in the next one bye